Forrester said that the first law of tinkering with a machine is you don't throw away the parts. Uh, and, and that's what wilderness areas do for us. Um, a study released by researchers in three countries uh, found uh, uh, that with a review of data from the last 30 years, that these places, these protected landscapes all over the world are doing their job. They have more species and they have a greater number of, of animals and plants than the places around them. Now we're here on National Geographic Weekend, we're talking with Jordan Fisher-Smith, who has written this essay on the wilderness paradox for Ryan Magazine. Here on the 50th anniversary of the Wilderness Act was passed by Congress. And if we didn't have this, I'm sure most wilderness areas would be overrun by Congress. Well, you know, that was sort of what the Wilderness Act intended. They wanted to stop roads and development, but they couldn't have imagined a world where uh, regional and global scale pollutants could float across these boundaries that they set and settle in the most remote places on Earth. Uh, I went around and visited a lot of, of wilderness areas in order to begin the work that I'm now doing of writing about the challenges of managing them. And one of the ones I went to was America's probably most remote wilderness, which was the 12.9 the, the million acre complex of the gates of the Arctic and the Noatak River in western Arctic. And uh, I went to a particular lake up there, and it just happens that because you could land a float plane on this lake, two sets of unrelated researchers went there around the same time. One set was a couple of archaeologists looking for ancient hunting camps, and they found one that was probably 4,000 or more years old, where they were perfectly preserved fish bones and caribou bones. They had cracked the ribs and sucked the marrow out of them, and these bones were preserved by the permafrost as if they had just been used. And uh, and they uh, determined that this was uh, a camp that had been used maybe for millennia by these uh, caribou hunters, and then while they were waiting for the caribou, they ate fish out of the lake. Well, another set of researchers came in, and they happened to be looking for evidence of global-scale pollution, and they recovered some fish from the lake, and uh, what they found out was that the fish in this lake that were, that was, that were used for millennia uh, to, to, to support human life were too high in dieldrin and outlawed, outlawed uh, pesticide and mercury uh, from coal burning all over the northern hemisphere to safely eat anymore. Now that's a profound change in this remote wilderness. It's The Paradox of Wilderness, is written by Jordan Fisher-Smith in Orion Magazine. I like you began with a great quote from Wallace Stegner called Wilderness Geography. It's important to keep these places, uh, and it does take some human intervention to keep them alive. Uh, Jordan, thanks for uh, putting the, the argument out there for us to talk about and think about the challenges. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. the same thing I've seen before in a new way. How do you look at 